right, here we go. Given two functions, f and g, the composite function is denoted by this little open circle that does not mean time. We read that as f of g. And it means you take the inside function and you put it in the outside function. So f of g of x is the same as saying f parentheses g of x. Like you take g and you plug it into x. So in pre-cal, they talked about the domain of this, and I just said, ah, not important. We don't need to do that. It's too complicated. And then, lo and behold, I teach college algebra, and on the unit test, there's a question that only asks you for the domain of the composite function. They don't even care about the composite function. They just want the domain of it, and so I should just suck it up and start teaching your pre-cal also. But it says the domain of f of g is the set of all numbers in the domain of g such that g of x is in the domain of s. See why I skipped it before? That just sounds like crazy talk, right? So let's start with doing this, and then we'll do the domain, okay? If I gave you f of x equals 2x squared minus 3 and g of x uh, equals 4x, what if I asked you to find these values of numbers? This is a lot easier than finding it in terms of x because if you just start with the inside function, you can just do this like in a couple steps. So when I see this, I know that's the same as f of g of 1, right? I just change that open circle to parentheses. In order of operations, start with the inside function. Forget about f for a minute. Could you find g of 1? Yeah, uh, that means I would come up here to the g function and I would plug 1 in, and 4 times 1 would give you 4. Yes? <coughs> and then I have to do the outside function. Now I have to do f of 4. So now can I go to the f function and plug 4 in there and get 2 times 4 squared minus 3, or 16 times 2 <coughs> is 32 minus 3 is 29. Is that true? So notice you only get one answer. Don't tell me the answers are 4 and 29. The answer is when you do the whole thing. I could actually even have you find like f of g of f of something, right? I could make you do it three times. Um, but you start with the inside function, do the outside function. Important to know that composite functions are not commutative. Commutative. I was in trouble of that. Which means order matters. It matters which one's on the inside. Because now what if we do the same thing and I do g of f of 1. Right now f is on the inside and I have to do f of 1 first. Leave the g alone. And then do the g function. And so if I plug 1 in for f, I'm going to get 2 times 1 minus 3. Or 2 minus 3 is negative 1. And then if I plug negative 1 into g, 4 times negative 1, I get negative 4. So it matters how it's written because it's not the same. g of f is not the same as f of g. Memories of doing this? Uh, sometimes they throw in f of f or g of g. It's the same idea. You're just putting it back into the same function. Um, but it doesn't matter it, which one you started with because it's the same letter, right? I have to read you out. So, do that already. F of F of G.
forming if there's been a rough technology rough technology feedback in the market is the best question. Um, yeah, so we paid a whole lot of money for this. Well, yeah, it's a lot of money. I know, but, but he installed a new bulb, which means it just says that. Maybe we can show him the photo. Like, oh, oh, that's so great. Ha! <laughs> 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 okay, so here are my steps on how to find the domain of f of g. Um, and then we're going to do this. I left a blank slide here so we could work this out. Uh, and I'm going to double page this so we can see this. But if they give you two functions and they tell you to find the domain of the composition, one thing you could do is you could actually just do the composition. You could do f of g of x. But with fractions, it gets a little crazy. you got to get common denominators. We'll actually do that tomorrow. Um, and we'll talk about is it easier just to actually find the f of g. But if you don't want to actually do the composition, these are the steps you have to follow. Step one, you have to find the domain of the inside function. So I'm saying f of g, so this is g of x because it's the inside function. Understand that if this would have said g of f, this step would have said find the domain of f of x. You follow me on that? The inside function. Step two says uh, find the domain of f of x. Um, this means that g of x cannot equal this value either. So it's like this extra thing you have to think about uh, of carrying through that uh, value. So we have to solve an equation, which we'll all set it up in a minute. And then step three, we're going to put the excluded values from step one with the excluded values from step two, and together that gives us the domain of f of g. Uh, notice I picked rational functions because if I would have picked really nice functions like x squared and x cubed, What's the domain of x squared? All real numbers. What's the domain of x cubed? So what would the domain of f of g be? All real numbers, right? Those are super great. If the domain's all real numbers, then the domain of f of g is all real numbers, which means they're going to give you ones where the domain is not all real numbers, so then you have to do some awesome stuff, okay? So um, I'm going to do step one. Step one, let's find the domain of g of x. So we just did this on our last unit test. If I have 4 over x minus 1, what is x not allowed to be? Yeah, I can't have 0 in my denominator, so I'm going to say that x is not allowed to equal 1. And I'm not even going to write it in um, interval or set notation right now because I just am going to carry that through to step 3 later. All right? But I know 1 is excluded. Step two is the tricky part, all right? Step two, we have to figure out what f of x is not allowed to be, which is not tricky. What is f of x not allowed to be? x cannot equal negative two. But that doesn't mean that that's excluded from our domain of f, because we have to say that g of x cannot equal this. So what you have to do is you have to set up the equation and tell me that g of x cannot equal negative 2. So what value of x makes that true? And so it just makes an equation that g of x is 4 over x minus 1. And I have to figure out, by solving that, what value do I have to exclude from my domain? Kind of sort of maybe follow that. So what can f be? Then set your g of x can't equal that, and you got to solve it. Which, again, is what we did in the last chapter. We solved equations like this. Maybe I could just multiply x minus 1 over here. Get x minus 1. Because if I multiply that x minus 1 over here, it cancels out. And I left it as not equal to, but if you change it to equal to, it's okay. I'm just reminding myself it's excluded. I get negative 2x plus 2. And then that's not hard to solve. I'm going to subtract 2 and get negative 6 cannot equal negative 2x, x cannot equal 3. Good <laughs> thing you guys are here to tell me how to do arithmetic. <laughs> negative 1, I mean negative 1. That's one of those mistakes that just makes you mad when you get a test back, right? That you wrote 4 minus 2 is 6. 
Yeah. I'm with you. It happens. It's why it's so hard to get a perfect on uh, the AP calculus exam. Because you can be really, really good, and then you can do something stupid like that, that you know the calculus, but you said four minus two is six, and then you're an idiot. <laughs> and you're like, really? That's what I did. Uh, multiple choice, it's all or nothing. So, and one time, I think I told you this before, but one time on a AP exam I took, I multiplied two times three and got five. And my answer was there. Like, it wasn't, I mean, there was a whole lot of other steps to it. But I did all this crazy calculus. The one mistake I made is I multiplied two times three and got five. And then my answer was still there. And I was like, how did they put that answer there? Like, how do they know that that's my mistake? But those darn AP teachers, or AP writers of text, like, they know. They know what to put as their answers. Um, so if you can remember step two, your domain is just putting those two things together. So my domain for this f of g, of f of g, in this case, is everything except 1 and negative 1. So if we write it in set notation, we can say x is not allowed to equal, in this case we could just say plus or minus 1, just the same thing. Or if you want to write it in interval notation, that would be negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to 1, 1 to infinity. But you got to remember both steps. Exclude what's in the inside function, and then set what's excluded from the outside function equal to the inside function to solve it. That's just crazy. Okay, so basically it's just that uh, if you find the delta value, uh, so that may be in uh, the domain of f, and then you plug the what the domain of x is in the distribution. And solve it. The negative 2 doesn't matter because f can't be negative 2. We have to say where can g not equal negative 2. Hey, my window's open because it overheated again and it was too hot for the projector. So it's extra cold here right now because I had to have my projector cool down. <laughs> yes, because my projector shut off and the only way I can get it to turn back on is to make it cold. So that it will work. Negative 2 cannot equal negative 3x. 
I'm going to divide by negative 2, and I'm going to say x cannot equal um, 3 halves, 1 half, however you want to say it. Did I do that wrong? That's the correct answer. No, we're only including what B can't be, right? This negative 3, what F can't be does not go in my domain. It just goes down here. And just like the last one, we didn't include what F couldn't be. But we included what G couldn't be. Right? Let's go back to the next one. Right? We said G couldn't equal 1. I had to include that. We said S couldn't equal negative 2, but that was not part of our domain. We solved it to say what it could be, right? Like our final answer was it could be equal 1 and it could be equal negative 1. Uh, really important for me to go through the steps today. I don't even know why I'm teaching you more things.